everybody, Dauntless here. Welcome back to the Space Quest series. Now, this one has taken me quite some time to get done, and here's why. This game is huge, and I was trying to make these videos the in do the, the entire game all in one whack, which is a terrible idea. Because with games like this, especially, where it has a slight glitch, where occasionally it crashes, the first time I tried it, it crashed and I lost a ton of progress. Second time, uh, same general thing. And over and over, I kept trying to get this out. And my final solution is I am breaking it in half. I am going to have two parts for Space Quest V. So hopefully, I'll be able to get it right this time. Uh, Space Quest V, little information on it, it is very different than any of the other Space Quest games. I think you'll notice that unlike the others where uh, Roger Wilco is basically this solo act, in this one, all of a sudden, he is more in a Star Trek type situation. Uh, the graphics are improved, the music is much better, the storyline is several times more complex than anything else in any of the other games. That doesn't necessarily make it better, because I think people didn't like much of the, uh, of it trying to push a, shall we say, ecological message, but overall, I still love this one, and I hope you will too. So here we go, everybody, Space Quest V. If it will start. Mm. You can already tell the theme is much more Star Trek y. It sounds like the original series theme. uniform reminds me a lot of the uh, Star Trek Wrath of Khan uniforms. Now here's something interesting I noticed when I was w making these. Noticed a name is missing from these credits. And that name is Scott Murphy. The games were always generally made by Scott Murphy and Mark Crow, but this one seems to have been exclusively made by Mark Crow. And Scott Murphy he might have had a little bit of influence, but he obviously didn't have enough to put his name in the credits. Captain's Log, SCS Excalibur, Stardate Blah. Fleet Admiral Roger Wilco commanding. The Excalibur is on course to investigate the mysterious disappearance of several ships in the uncharted region of space known as the Minuto Triangle. I no doubt have been selected for this mission due to my great achievements as a military leader and matchless diplomatic skills. Nice grammar there. And by the way, if you've ever tried Menudo, I think we can agree that, unless you're insane, it's awful. It's so bad. I go forward with total confidence in my ship and my crew, yet I am vaguely uneasy. I cannot put memories of traveling to the future and meeting my son out of my mind. Each night my dreams are haunted by the image of the woman he said would one day be my wife. I know she's out there, somewhere. And that is a great little reference to Space Quest IV. But that's not important right now. The fate of Trillions rides on the decisions I may have to make in the next several hours. As captain of the Star Confederacy's proudest flagship, I must follow the supreme guideline to boldly go where no man has... No, no, no. To bravely traverse where no creature has traversed... That's not it. Ah, skip it. Nice. Admiral, strike ships coming in at point three five. Epileptic seizure alert. Shields up, battle stations, lock weapons. Neutron beams locked, proton torpedoes armed. Tactical, fire neutron beams, help, hard to port. Lieutenant Wilco, what in the name of the Seven Star Cluster are you doing in the bridge simulator? Get your sorry carcass out of there and get back to class where you belong, Space Cadet! 
And if I catch you in there again without permission, I'll have you tossed out of the academy so fast you'll get warp disorientation. That's pretty quick. Simulation terminated. I like to think that this that character sounds kind of like Zat Bran again. Oh, it's the Millennium Falcon. You can tell because of the uh, little thing there on the side. I think these people have a rat problem. Or a mouse problem. His illusions of spacefaring grandeur, cruelly shattered by Captain Quark, Roger Wilco exits from the bridge simulator into the hallways of the Star Confederacy Space Academy, which was never mentioned in any of the other games. So you can tell they really wanted to take this in another direction where he has enrolled himself in an attempt- Oh, wow. The last several months have not been easy for our hero. What with having to juggle time between skipping classes, snoozing through lectures, and spending long moments considering the implications of actually opening a textbook. But our fearless former sanitation engineer has stumbled resolutely past these obstacles, pursuing his goal with unwavering determination, blissfully unaware that fate has about was about to hurl another spitball in his direction. Like, you can tell they really wanted to do something else. Like, this is so completely different. And it's not something I really dislike. It's just weird. I've never seen a game take such a 180 before. Like, the original ones were almost like a Flash Gordon type of thing. You're this guy with a spaceship and you go save people. And this is all of a sudden, you know, Captain Kirk. This aged behemoth has outlived its intended lifespan by several decades, and will soon be heading for the scrapyards. It's the Enterprise A, uh, nacelle. The Starcon Registry lists this ship as the personal launch of Ambassador Beatrice Wankmeister from the G6 Quadrant. You dimly recall hearing her name once before, but the effort to remember anything further results in nothing more than a storm of misfired brain synapses and a dull headache. All right, let's set my movement speed up just a little bit. There we go. Ah, itching! Let's see if anybody can get this reference. If you want to try and guess, drop it in the comment section. The SCS Lollipop, a good ship. Fellow members of the tightly knit Star Con Cadet Brigade. Mm. Worf. In the back there. He has a different uniform than anybody else. Sorry I'm late, Professor. You mean the oh, Starcon aptitude test is today? Yes, sir. I'll get started right away. What's that? Come talk to you after class? Yes, sir. All right. Kronko is commanding a Nova-class scout ship. When he finds himself face to face with three Horak battlecruisers, he should surrender in the face of impossible odds, pretend they aren't there, activate his si ship's self-destruct mechanism, blah, beam over a pick you up, okay, or reboot. I'm gonna do the beam over and pick you up, okay with a bomb in it. When encountering an alien ship for the first time, you should immediately open fire with every weapon at your disposal. That is definitely a Warhammer 40,000 way of doing things. Broadcast Wagner's ride in the Valkyries over the comm link. Beam your entire crew over to their ship as a gesture of goodwill. B then A. Ride in the Valkyries then shoot them. None of the above. Before beaming down to an unexplored planet for the first time, you should be sure to check to see that your seatbelt is fastened and tray tables are locked securely in the upright position. Your fly. That's actually a good thing to check. Your life insurance coverage. The Fetzer valve on your oxygen mask. The planet's atmospheric readings. 
Obviously, I'd say check the life insurance coverage of my red shirts, but we'll go with the atmospheric readings. Those red shirts can figure their own job out. You're marooned on an alien planet with no weapons and a killer android out for your blood. You should. Gather basic ingredients to make gunpowder and fashion a cannon from vines and sticks, Captain Kirk from, uh, uh, the arena. I think it was the arena. Stuff a banana in her exhaust pipe. Drop a big rock on the robot and shout, Hasta la vista, baby! Roll in the mud to camouflage yourself. Climb a tree, flap your arms wildly, and scream, Tweet, tweet! at the top of your lungs in order to mimic the mating behavior of the ruby-throated Arcturan swine falcon as a diversionary tactic. I think that would be more of a confusionary tactic, but I kind of like it. Uh, I'm gonna go with dropping a rock on him. That's always fun. You're in an EVA with a partner, and you notice his face is turning blue, and he is clutching wildly at his throat. He could be a bullion and have an itch. This is a sign that you will soon need a new partner. That's true. In a burst of creative insight, he has created a new dance called the Moonwalk. He is suffering from a vitamin deficiency and needs to eat more leafy green vegetables. He fell for the old golf ball in the hose trick, A and D. Yep, A and D sound right. To ensure that your crew's microwave meals are heated adequately and evenly on board your ship, you should wrap everything in aluminum foil. Do you know what metal does when you put it in a microwave? If you want a cool little uh, science experiment, take a CD and put it in your microwave, silver side up. Uh, don't blame me if anything happens to your microwave. I've never had it break the microwave, but the CD will be destroyed. But it is pretty cool, and especially when you look at what the CD looks like afterwards. But uh, only cook it for about like five seconds though. But basically, you'll see exactly why you don't put metal inside of your microwave. Cook each meal at the maximum power setting for 45 minutes. That's pretty epic. Put a live space varmint in with each meal so that you can more easily determine when it is done. Yes! Huck the thing and settle for roasting wieners on the maneuvering jets. Considering my absolute disdain for microwaves, that's probably the one I'm going to go with. Inject a radioactive plutonium isotope into each piece of food. When it glows, it's ready. Yep, that sounds right. <laughs> that sounds good! Totally healthy and not going to cause my, you know, hair to fall out. If Grieve leaves the Crab Nebula at 3200 hours GST, Galactic Standard Time, and travels at 9.75 million ZPM, how long will it take him to reach planet Davicon 5 if he has the solar wind at his back? 49.3 hours. He will never reach Davicon 5. The solar wind is highly unstable and will blow him off course. 3.75 standard days, 4930 GST, Never, the neutron star at the center of the Crab Nebula is so massive that Grieve's ship can never reach escape velocity. Yes. How fast does light travel through a vacuum? Uh, 186,000 mega MPS. Very, 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 very fast. 669,600,000 miles per hour. Depends whether it's an upright or canister vacuum. You know... If I calculated out A and C, I bet they are the exact same thing. Just one is miles per second, the other is miles per hour. I'm gonna do very, 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 very fast. That sounds scientific enough. Which is an example of a fuzzy boundary? The area in space between two planetary bodies where a small third object is not clearly under the gravitational influence of either, the event horizon of a supermassive black hole, the place where a receding hairline gives way to bare scalp, the point at which the marginal utility of trying to squeeze the last bit of toothpaste from the tube is offset by the opportunity cost of going to the store for a new one. I'm gonna go with A, but I'm just gonna say for the record that if I put the radioactive isotope inside of my food, C might actually be a little more likely. 
To successfully accomplish a manual molecular reintegration bypass on a standard transporter unit, you should reverse the phase polarity of the interphase grid. Ha! That's a joke! Everybody knows there's no interphase grid inside of the transporter. You gotta worry about the fil the uh, transporter buffer first. Uh, I mean, uh, wait, what did I just say? Jiggle the handle. Pray fervently to whatever deity you happen to believe in. C, then B. That sounds like most of my repairs. Switch to U.S. Sprint. Oh, boy. The test is over already? Yes, sir, I agree that cleaning the Academy crest is an appropriate punishment for being late to class. I'll get right on it. All right! Well, that went great! I don't think I got any points for it, though. That's funny. Oh, but I think you get points if you cheat. If you look over on your other on the other guy's stuff. Obviously, this game was not made during the age of, you know, the overly sensitive political correct types. There's a blob there. No! One would think I packed that... Uh, closet. Ugh. You cram the scrub o -matic into your seemingly bottomless pocket. You cram the safety cones into your seemingly bottomless pocket. Thank goodness I have pockets unlike anything else out there. It's like hammer space. Only I can't pull anything I want out of it. All I can do is, you know, pull whatever I put in there out of it. And stuff. Stop judging me out there. I'm tired. I just finished the uh, first part of Last Door and I'm still tired, but I wanted to try and get as many videos out as I can and I got some time, so. Yes. Hey, Darth Vader is over there taking out Obi Wan. This three-man fighter was captured from the dreaded Pirates of Pestula during their daring attempt to escape the confines of Space Quest 3. I like this guy's design. It was kind of like the alien, I guess. Is that one of those kissy monsters from Volhall's Fortress in Space Quest 2? Nice green hair, by the way. Ah. A classic game he's playing right there. Of course, by the time this game came out, that game was about as classic as this game is right now. Did you follow that? The Star Congress is dull and dingy. Looks like I could use a good scrubbing. And guess who's going to be doing that scrubbing? That's right, you are! Fine, I guess I'll do it myself. You may notice I'm saving a lot. I do not want this thing to crash and me to lose uh, a lot of uh, progress. It's a very long game. Yow! I guess we figured out how this thing works. Clean that spot. I saw you miss it. Let's get the center here. Come on, circular motions, that's right. Circular motions make everything nice and clean. Ah, get back over there! What in the world? I think this thing is a problem. This machine is messed up! You know what that means? There we go. Cool. See, I know I could get that. This is a well-made machine. As you can see, Ambassador Wagmeister, we run a very tight ship here at the Academy. This institution is the pride of the Star Confederation and one of the best of its kind in the known universe. I can tell your facial expression. It's nice to see our tax buckazoids aren't going completely to waste, Captain Cork. Ooh, very, um, feisty. 
Here we are, what Mrs. Miss Wankmeister, not Mrs. Yet. This is the main rotunda. It was dedicated on start date whatever, Ambassador. Excuse me, aren't you Roger Wilco, the man who foiled the Syrian some years back? Finally, somebody remembers that! Ah, some serious work went into that. Her eyes are a little far apart. Suddenly, it all comes rushing back. It's her, the woman from the holodisc in Space Quest 4. Now's your big chance, Roger. Say something clever and romantic. Ah, uh, uh, I mean, ah, uh, uh, yes? Way to sweep her back on to her feet, Raj. Nice to see you haven't lost your golden touch with women. <coughs> Excuse me, Ambassador, but we should be heading to the conference now. You're not at all what I expected, Wilco. See you around. Uh-oh. Hold on a minute, cadet! Looks like you missed a spot. <laughs> Uh, sir, you better watch your step. The floor is still really wet in just a little bit. Slippery. <laughs> nice rug, Quark. Is that a toupee or a roadkill? Ugh! You did that on purpose, Wilco. I'm placing you on double secret probation. Double secret. One more screw up and your space cadet days are over. Well, fine, fancy pants. It's not like it was my fault. Just watch where you're going. Wow! The scrub matic Power Floor Scrubber Model 1812 with patented sit and spin cleaning action. Nice. At least they give us good tech around here. I think this is probably the first game that didn't have as much of the Space Quest original theme in it. Because Space Quest 4 had a little bit in the intro, and they definitely had it in the end. Space Quest 3 had a little bit, and 1 and 2 definitely were basically the same. But this one, it, like, again, doing things totally differently. That song is barely ever in it. Huh? What was that? Excuse me, Captain, you didn't raise your hand. Now, as I was saying, Ambassador Wankmeister, ooh, nice name, we are a fairly remote installation, and I simply can't spare the ships to launch the kind of operation you suggest. I'm afraid you don't understand the potential ramifications of this problem, Admiral. I'm not clicking through these because they go so fast. If the sludge ban is continued to illegally dump toxic waste whenever and wherever they choose, the environmental consequences could be staggering. Entire planets could be devastated. I think you overstate the issue, Ambassador. Even so, we have more than enough ships on patrol to put a stop to these sludge bandits, as you call them. Look, Ambassador, we have top-notch ships staffed with the finest crews in the galaxy. Starcon accepts only the best and brightest for fleet training. Nice peeking in, Raj. You look, Rughead! Illegal dumping is going on in this sector right under your polyweave. Our patrols have located dumping sites on four planets in the G6 Quadrant alone. Hey, this is made from real hair. <clears throat> In any case, I'd like to hear more about these alleged dumping sites. Perhaps over dinner this evening? 
I have already transmitted the coordinates to Starcon Central Command, along with a list of respected sites that we haven't been able to check out yet. Well then, that settles it. Captain Quark, you shall go to these sites and investigate Ambassador Wagmeister's allegations. Admiral, I'll be going along as an observer. I'm afraid that's impossible. Regulations strictly forbid civilian participation in military operations. Ah, uh, Ambassador, I think having the Ambassador... Admiral, I think having the ambassador along would be a good idea. I'm sure the two of us could develop a productive working relationship. Admiral, may I remind you that I am an official representative of the people of Quadrant G6 with full ambassadorial status and as such not subject to... Now, now, Ambassador, I'm sure Captain Quark will do everything necessary to resolve the situation. There's no need for you to hinder him on this mission. This is my system and my people we're talking about here. I'm going on that ship and that's all there is to it. Case closed, we're adjourned. Good day, gentlemen. She's quite the go-getter, isn't she? No! Oh, great. The savior of the universe in all his glory. Isn't there a mop somewhere with your name on it? Way to go, Raj! Another sterling performance! They definitely were going more toward the, uh, making fun of Roger in this one. This is like the- his big fall. This is awful! I totally biffed on my SAT test! I'll never make captain now! That's too bad, cadet sh sh block. How'd you make out, Roger? I haven't seen my score yet. The SAC scores for a class are posted on the bulletin board, Raj. I sure hope you made out better than I did. This cadet looks pretty bummed. He must not have done very well on the SAT. But then again, he probably did better than you. It's a small group of your brother cadets. Oh, I should save, in case of crash. In case of crash, save here. But yeah, uh, the dialogue is interesting because it goes by automatically, and it's timed well enough that you normally don't have to worry about it, uh, skipping it, that you normally don't have to worry about skipping it yourself. The problem is that whenever I try to skip ahead, I accidentally skip pieces of dialogue, and that's really bad in a game where you may notice the narration isn't there as much. It is dealt, it, everything is presented to you a lot more with actual dialogue. So if you accidentally skip it, you miss sections. Well, let's see what we got. I know I'm awesome, so how good did I do? Cadet Wilco, on behalf of the administration, I would like to congratulate you on receiving a perfect score in your set. Well, duh. Not in the entire history of StarCon Academy has a cadet achieved such high marks. You should be proud! I am! On the recommendation of our test analysis computer system, you are to begin training for captaincy aboard one of the fine star cruisers. Good! Captain Quark will post your assignment. Ah, crap! You've done the Academy proud. Sincerely, current Chief Commanding Officer's name here. Oh, this is the Space Coast theme right here. And so, having undergone an intensive weekend captain's training seminar on the planet Oakhurst, Roger is shuttled to his new command, the SCS Eureka. Eureka! Hey! That's not a starship, it's a garbage scow! Figures! Ah, uh, I'm gonna guess that this is Quark's version of, uh, comedy. No bugger.
Hello, sir. Hey, sir! I'm Subcorporal Drool, your nav and weapons officer on this heap! Flows the name, I'm your comm specialist grade 4. Hello, crew. I'm your new commanding officer, Captain Roger Wilco. I know some of you may not be as excited to be serving on the Eureka as I am, but I promise you this. We are going to be the best gosh darn garbage scout in the entire Star Confederation. You have, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. So hold your heads high, men. We shall overcome. This, all we are is dust in the wind, born free, running wild with liberty and justice for all. So let's be all we can be. Remember, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. Woof. No. Landed on thick there, eh, Raj? It was the chair, really? Looks like we got a live one here, Flo. You said it, draw. Am I the only one who notices that she's missing a nose? Alright, saving, and I'm going to look around the ship just a little bit. Kind of give you guys a guided tour. So obviously this is the bridge. Uh, you may notice I only have two people on the bridge. So it's kind of funny though, considering that this bridge looks big enough that it could fit another two people on either one of those consoles on the side, plus, you know, a couple more consoles. Well, well, look at here. Our brand spanking new squeaky clean, neatly pressed captain has arrived. Pleased to meet you. Um. Please, my friends call me Cliffy, but you can call me Clifford. I'm chief engineer for the Eureka. What the? Sorry about the muck, Captain. I dropped my wrench down the head. Well, thanks for warning the early warning. Now, if you'll excuse me, sir, I have to get work, get some work done back. Whatever, I gotta get back to work. Yes, do that. Back to work, you plebe. Okay. And before you judge me for already grabbing all this stuff, I'm just gonna say for the record, this is how we played this game back in the day because. We got so used to having to track down all this stuff and, you know, having to pick up as much as we could in the early parts of the game that we just did it automatically. We'd pick up everything, whether we thought it was going to be useful or not. Because we never knew when later on we'd never be able to get back to it. Let's see. This appears to be a roll of antacid tablets. I'll take that. This is Cliffy's tool of choice when working on the Eureka's delicate and temperamental electronic systems. A hammer. A hot glue gun, great for a laugh on unsuspecting party guests. <laughs> it's a large drill. A Schmier's brand crafts alien laser cutting torch. I'll take that. A whatchamacallit. It's a doohickey. I was always wondering what one of those looked like. A space gizmo. It's one of those nifty portable handheld vacuums. You know, the kind that can't even pick up breadcrumbs. And back in the day, they couldn't. It's one of those nifty portable hand... Okay, looked at that. A pair of pliers. Do I want that? No. I'm gonna grab these pole punchers. And the spare fuse. Cliffy's toolbox is filled with miscellaneous bits of junk and tools of every size, shape, and description. In order to not irk Cliffy, you put the tools where you found them. See, I'm a nice enough guy. This computer is running a highly complex virtual reality program at the moment. I can see that. This room serves the Eureka as both a transporter room and science lab. Needless to say, this had led has led to some interesting experiments by rambunctious crew members on past voyages. Is this why I only have three? This chamber houses the Eureka's cryogenic cooler. 
Cliffy uses it to keep his Corona light chilled to a frosty 4 degrees Kelvin when it is not otherwise occupied. That does seem like a good use for it. A Habitube brand adaptive biological specimen container. Red data lines streak across the face of this display. The output bears a startling resemblance to your past, most recent EEG readings. Fascinating. Okay. The Eureka's pod bay is probably one of the least used areas of the ship. None of the crew like to come here because this is where the previous captain had his accident. Oh, that's great. The Eureka is outfitted with a Star Roamer EVA pod for emergency repairs and rescue missions. Emergency override controls for the airlock are located on this pedestal. This compartment is used to store rebreather masks. Okay, so we got a bait door, we have a pod, we have a transporter, we have a... <coughs> and we have plenty of extra little stuff here and there. It looks like I am ready to roll. Let's take this show on the road. Let me grab my notes out here so that I know where to go. This game has copy protection just like the other, a couple of the other ones, actually all the other ones at this rate, the VGA especially. So, yes. You had to write down these codes on the manual so you knew exactly where, uh, what to type in to send your ship to places. Flo, hail Starcon. Tell them we're heading out. We are cleared for the departure, Captain. And again, see, I just did it. I need to not do that because, man, those go by fast. Lay in a course. What's the coordinates, Captain? I like thinking he's a younger red dude. Corn is locked in, sir. Ready to get underway. All right, sir. But I'm going to put the pedal to the metal once we leave the station. Sounds like a good idea. Oh, boy. Now what? My goodness, that is an anatomically correct robot, and nice hair, too. Ah, yes. Here we are, happily enjoying our trip. What does anybody have to say about anything? How did you come to be posted to the Eureka? It's kind of a long story. Relax, there's plenty of time until the travel timer runs out. Oh, breaking the third wall. It was involved, I was involved in a very unfortunate accident, sir. It was while I was ser serving on the SCS Stupendous. I, it was a mistake anyone could have made, really. I'm listening. We were patrolling the neutral zone when an unidentified ship suddenly popped up on our screen. So naturally, I opened fire with everything we had. Naturally. Thank you, Roger. My thoughts exactly. She was blown to bits instantly. Unfortunately, it turned out to be one of our own robotic freighters. Well, at least there was nobody on it. Imagine your embarrassment. Yeah, anyhow, after that I got canned and transferred to the Eureka. What about, what did you do, sir? 
You must have screwed up pretty bad to get stuck with a command like this, or else tick somebody off real good. I don't know. Well, come to think of it, probably the latter. Yes, we all know who did it, Captain Quark. <sighs> I'll deal with him soon. Uh, nope, no, that's okay. <laughs> well, she's pleasant. Are we there yet? Oh, my leg. Ow, I've been sitting on it. We're approaching our destination, Captain. Uh, regular speed, or impulse, or whatever. Drop us out of light speed. Aye, sir! Everything sounds like a car. I'm tracking the waste beacon, sir. Okay, save. And I am saving this much just so that if it crashes, I don't lose a whole ton. Aye, sir! This game ramps up your score pretty quick. I'm already at 305, and I think that's like half of what you get in the other games. That's like half the total score you get in most of the other Space Quest games. And I'm not even close to being halfway done with this one yet. Captain, I'm picking up a life form reading in the waste compartment. Well, thank you. Captain, you better come down here. There's some strange scratching and whining noise coming out of the trash bin. Well, I guess since we don't have a security team, I'll go do that. I guess those were all going to be installed on Wednesday? There's definitely something in there, Captain. Could be dangerous. You go first. Well, thank you. is very affectionate. Aww, what the? Hey, he's a cute little bugger. I think I'll keep him. I'll call him Spike. Yeah, that looks like a Spike. That's a good name for that guy. Hey, where are you going, little fella? Well, you know, I guess I'll just move on. Hey, thanks for leaving this mess back here for me to clean up. Real captain-like view. That little acid piddling beastie you turn loose is roaming around burning holes and everything. You better take care of him fast before he eats through the hull and kills us all. Ah, oh, work, work, work. It's like I have to do everything around here. And I saw you using that paddle ball thing. Woof, he wasn't kidding. Spike! Heal, boy! Heal! My dog is too out of it to do any to even notice. Again, I gotta remember to save.
and now I will place you in this container. Ta-da! Instant spike containment cell. Poor little fella must have eaten something that didn't agree with him. Those anacids should reduce the acidity of his metabolism. Interesting thing, uh, if Cliffy is in the room when you do that, and this time he wasn't, he will say something along the lines of, You're a genius! You're a genius, sir! I would have fed him a chili dog. <laughs> Which would have been hilarious, but destructive at the same time. But yeah, there are some things that you can miss if uh, certain little events don't happen. You and your video game over there. What are you doing? You're filing your nails now? <sighs> I have a great crew. <clears throat> I love my crew. Thanks for taking care of your critter, Captain. I finally managed to patch up the deck. Wonderful! B-E-A-U-T-V-L Alright, I am going to head to our next planet, which I think is P-U. 92767. Coordinates locked in, sir! Ready to get underway! Well, light speed away then! Aye, sir! So I have to just look down. Okay, cool. Ah, well, here we are, traveling again, you know. <sighs> now, you can actually get up and run around while this is going on, and you can explore, and then you'll get a calm uh, chat when you arrive at your destination. We're approaching our destination, Captain! Dropped regular speed. Aye, sir! I'm voicing this guy as somebody who is way too excited to do their job. I'm tracking a waste beacon, sir. Well then, suck it up! Aye, sir! Get it? Suck it up? <laughs> I'm like a giant vacuum and stuff and... Yeah. If any of you laughed at that, you're despicable. <laughs> uh, I remember that, the husky on the side. Yahoo! Alright. Captain, I'm intercepting a rather unusual message on StarCon Priority Frequency 2. I'm putting it on screen. Maggot the dung heap, come in dung heap. Oh, nice nicknames there. You do kind of look like a maggot, and nice mohawk, by the way. Maggot the dung heap, come in dung heap. What in the deep heap? What in well, this is dung heap? What in the platies are you doing on this frequency? You, we have a really hot load of goods that needs to be disposed of right away. I thought I told you never to call me here. Meet me at the usual place and we'll discuss it. Dung heap out. Bye bye. Bye bye, Mr. Maggot. I'm sorry, Captain, but I wasn't able to pin down the source of the transmission. It was a very curious transmission. All right. Let's save and do our final mission here. We're going to KU, Kiz Urzgebergiber, or whatever the world that name is. All right, locked in, and let's hit the go button. Light speed. Aye, sir. All right, give me one moment. And while we're traveling, I will communicate on my fancy futuristic technical device. Uh...
There we go. All right. Uh, wow. I'm trying to come up with stuff to say about this, but I mean, all I can say is that when we got this, we got shot. What was that? We've been hit by a proton torpedo. A tractor beam is locked onto us, Captain. We're being pulled in. But by whom? Get us out of here, drool! Helm not responding, sir! Weapon systems inoperative! Oh, well that's why we weren't shooting. I... For some reason, I guess I didn't catch that. Well, thank you. Alert! Warning! Uh-oh. We're being hailed, sir. I'm putting it on screen. No, we're not here! Hide! Roger will go under the authority of ERGS, extensively revised galactic statute, blah, 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 blah. I hereby command you to beam down and surrender your person for arrest. Failure to comply with these instructions will result in the destruction of your ship and everyone aboard. Looks like the Gipazoid Novelty Company still hasn't forgotten about that little piece of mail fraud you pulled on them back in Space Quest 2. Oh. That. I thought all this was over with after I had that run-in with Arnoid on the planet Fleetfoot a few weeks back, a few years back. You thought wrong, human. It just goes to show, never send a man droid to do a woman droid's work. Can't we come to some kind of arrangement? How can you tell she's a woman droid? Oh, that's right. Beam down to the planet. Your body will be disassembled and sold to various biotechnology firms to pay interest and collection fees. I'm scanning your ship. Any attempt at escape or subterfuge will result in the immediate annihilation of your ship and crew. You have five standard time units before I destroy your ship, Roger Wilco. I guess that's minutes and not hours. I think she means business, Captain! I agree. And could you hurry up and beam down, sir, before she gets impatient and blows us all up? Well, thank you for the, uh, for the concern, Flo. Well, she's not going to get me without a fight. Whatever you say, sir. Been nice knowing you. And thank you for the vote of confidence. Well, I suppose we should resign ourselves to our fate. So long, everybody! It's not like I've destroyed one of these before and everything. Energize! Meanwhile... some very useful landing gear. It would take technic technically they'd be very difficult to figure out, you know, engineering wise, but if you could, they'd be very useful for landing a ship in, you know, areas like this. Areas where you normally couldn't land like a spacecraft. Okay. Aha! Uh -huh. There you are. See if you can outrun my energy bolts of death, broom jockey. I'm out of here. Ah, uh, and the fact that she... Okay, so basically they said she has, uh... Sorry, you're in major trouble, blah blah blah, laser bolts of death, cloaking device, and all that sort of stuff. Basically, she's the same thing as, uh... Arnoid, only Arnoid was melee-centric, and she apparently has ranged abilities. Oh, 
Alright, let's get out of here. I got a stick. I got to whack her with a stick. Not really. I'm going to use a stick to whack her with something else. Either way, I'm going to whack her. Quiet. You dirty-minded individuals. That is not at all what I meant. and You know it! I like how you can hear her coming. One of you over there. I know at least one of you. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. Hoya! Hasta la vista, baby! Woo-ha! Oh, there's the first crash. Okay, so thankfully, I have a very recent save, so I can just jump right back in. And I'm really sorry that it's doing that. It's just, I don't know why. I'm sure there's some little error or something that's going on, but... Is because I didn't set the uh, frame skip on that up until then. Okay, let's do this again. Hiya! With a mighty wimpy jump, I managed to get to the other side. All right, one more time. Hasta la vista, baby. Yahoo! And there she goes. Looks like you bowled her over with your ingenuity, Roger. Look, she's cooling her jets at the bottom of that pool below. Nice work. Darn right. So now I have an opportunity to grab a couple extra items. The detail in this game is much, much better than the others. I felt like Space Quest 1 VGA had a lot crisper graphics than Space Quest 4, but Space Quest 4 got a lot more of the uh, feel right. Because in Space Quest 1 VGA, in the original version, I kind of liked how they... how the game looked very sci-fi-ish. It was about as sci-fi as you can get with, like, gray walls and blue and uh, lights and very symmetrical stuff. Gimme. And then VGA all of a sudden turned it into some really weird looking tech. It was almost like they, it was definitely a product of like early 90s, late 80s strangeness. You managed to grab one of the pieces of fruit and liberate it from the swinging cluster, then shove it into your pants. Okay. It also makes a reference to the ever-increasing bulge in my pocket, which is definitely not a sign that I'm happy to see anybody. Wow, this one is just getting terrible! <laughs> I'm trying to keep it family-friendly, but they keep throwing these jokes at me, I swear! I can't help it! Yeah. By stretching your limited ingenuity to the fullest, you've managed to knock out WD-40's cloaking mechanism. The downside is, now she's really ticked off. Ah oh well. And now she'll show up anywhere. I know you're here somewhere, Wilco. Come out and face me like a woman. It's your destiny. You know, if they ever do a voiceover for this game, I would pay big money to get Jerry Ryan to voice her. I mean, she'd do perfectly. She already did kind of a robot and Voyager.
what did I just get here? The metal head from the Annihilator dro Android WD-40. Hey, it's Cliffy! Come to rescue me, right? Hey, Captain! Well, I'll be! You're still in one piece! That chef scanner's picked up a large explosion and we drew lots to see who got to come down and collect your remains. And you lost? Nope! I won! <laughs> And I'm relieved to see you anyway, sir. It will save a lot of uncomfortable explanations back at StarCon. Yeah, like how you keep going through captains. I see you got the robot's head there, sir. I've been looking for it. Now beam me back up to the ship and then finish picking up the pieces down here. Well, excellent. Then we can get off this rock. Actually, it's a very pretty rock. I will say for the record, this is a nice looking planet. Oh my. Slight transporter glitch all right let's see you think you heard cliffy beaming in it might be a good idea to give him that android head Hey Cliffy, I have something for you. I just wanted you to get ahead! <laughs> oh, that was bad even for me. Your sense of humor is passed only by our captaining skill, sir. Here, I have something you might be interested in. I like to think that Cliffy is a lot like the engineers in, like, StarCraft. I was putting this WD-40 in the back together and had a couple pieces left over. Thought you might like a souvenir. Here you go. Thanks, I guess. Does it exactly where do you think that would fit? Uh. A leftover part from Cliffy's overhaul of WD-40, the Annihilator droid. Alright. Energize. I seem to remember her ship is still down there, and I want it. Wait up, Captain. I'm going with you. Fine. Well, I guess just invite yourself. Hey, why'd we beam in here? I wonder if this little device had anything to do with it. Saving. Let me see. Okay, we're good. Oh, hey, what gives? This must be the cloaked ship of that killer android. Neat! Yes, yes, you've discovered it. I had no idea it was there. It's not like I saw any cinematics beforehand that told me about it. Go on without me, Captain. I'm not gonna make it. Oh, fine. All right. And normally I would show you deaths, but because of how long the game is, and the fact that it tends to crash, I am, excuse me, I am going to avoid it for now. Aha! This must be where the cloaking device is housed. It's some sort of locking mechanism. This should be easy to crack open. 
Uh-oh, it appears that you have triggered some sort of alarm. Better get out of this thing and get out of here fast. Not without my cloaking device. Nice. Good job! Now get out of here! I got it! Let's move before this thing blows! Oh, wow, Chief. Did that hurt? It looks real painful, you okay? Fine. Perfect. Now help me up. Sure thing. Here you go. I'll get around to installing this device as soon as I finish my repairs to the android. Are you sure that fixing her is a good idea, Cliffy? I'm still not sold on the whole plan. Trust me, sir. Just because you two had a slight misunderstanding, there's no reason she can't become a valuable member of the crew. Slight misunderstanding? Cliffy, she tried to kill me! Well, there is that. I'm pretty sure I can crank down her lethality setting a couple notches afterwards. She'll probably just want to beat you severely. That's not gonna cut it, Cliffy. Oh, I suppose you're right, sir. It's probably kind of hard to captain the ship if you've been beaten senseless. Uh, probably. But I do think it would help keep you on your toes if she took a random swing at you now and again. Actually, that's not a bad idea, but... I don't want her to so much as scowl at me, Cliffy. Alright, sir. Have it your way. Alrighty then. Well, we've finished all three of our stops, so let's see what else we want to do. We finished our mission. We finished our mission, Captain. Let's take some R&R &R at the space bar. Well, hey, it rhymes. Well then, lay in a course. Captain, I've been on duty for quite a while now, sir, and I think we could all stand some R&R. &R. Okay, the bar. Corn is locked in, sir. Ready to get underway. He seems excited. Light speed. Aye, sir. I don't think I've ever been to this place. What can you tell me about the destination? A bar is a great place to hang out, Captain. Come on, hurry up. There. Well then, I guess it is time for some R&R. &R. Yep. Just flying along. Oh, we're there. All right. Regular speed. Slow us down. 
Aye, sir! Cool. Uh, orbit? Aye! Standard orbit! Aye! Let's party! Last one down to the station is a rotten ore out of them! Okie dokie. I think I'll just take my time. Thank you very much. And all of a sudden, my ship is deserted. That's a good idea. Let's leave the ship completely undefended. I suppose I could let the, uh, spike out. He could guard the ship, right? Energize! I love the original series, uh, transporter effect there. <laughs> Sprint again. Excuse me, uh, Captain, but I see an old buddy of mine over there by the bar. Uh-oh, here we go again. All right, I am going to save again, and then I'm going to see how long it's been going, because I think this is about the halfway point in the game. If I have a, if it's not too long, I might finish the space bar section. Uh... You know what? I'm going to call it good for now. Because I think I would like to stop here. Because this is kind of the halfway section. Next episode, I will be doing Space Bar. You get to see Battleships. Probably one of the most addictive arcade sequences in the entirety of Space Quest. Normally, I hate those things. You all know it. But this one I absolutely adore. And then the real story starts to unfold. So, uh... Thank you everybody for dropping by, and I will put up part two as soon as I can. Thank you all for watching, and you all have a great day.